Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Hope all of you are doing super well. Before we get into today's content, I want to take a second to address a question I've had over and over again, and that's about Bad Batch Season 2 coverage. I'm not ignoring this show. I've honestly just been too busy to get timely videos out on this channel. I have, however, been doing shorter uploads on my Clips channel, X Clips, which I'll link down below if you want daily Bad Batch coverage. I recommend you check it out there. Next big episode, I'll probably do a video for this channel as well. Today, however, we're talking about what I call the slug tank, but what is actually called the corporate alliance tank droid or the persuader type droid enforcer. What a lot of people don't recognize is that despite this thing looking a little bit silly, you know, when you're watching from the skies of Kashyyyk, this droid was absolutely terrifying for civilians on the ground. The history of the tank droid is pretty interesting. Like most CIS weapons of war, it was actually designed before the Clone Wars and initially used to protect protect the interests of the corporate alliance. That's actually one thing I find really interesting about the CIS. There are all these corporations and other groups which do one thing really well, whether it's making massive transport ships, which can be used for droid starfighters and battle droids, or in the case of the corporate alliance, making devastating ground-based weapons. Why was this thing so terrifying? Well, let's talk about it. First of all, we have the pure size of the thing and its general appearance. The Persuader class was nearly 20 feet tall and it was dominated by a single treaded drive motor. This is the feature which really distinguishes it from other CIS ground vehicles, walkers, tanks, whatever. The Persuader class destroyed things simply by moving, and often the droid brain in the Persuader went out of its way to run into civilians, civilian buildings, whatever. There's a description of this in Star Wars Fact File 26. Standing over six meters tall, the tank droid was enough to strike terror into most opponents. This was especially true because the majority of the those who faced the wrath of the tank droid were innocent civilians, as the corporate alliance sent its droids off to world whose governments were unwilling to accept the trade requirements imposed on them. Part of this usage was just practicality. Let's take a look at the tank droid. It's basically, as mentioned, one big tank tread, with what's described as small outriggers on each side. The tank droid could not operate well on difficult terrain. I think what we see in Revenge of the Sith, where it's coming out of the water on Kashyyyk, is probably the most sort of unique environment that it could be effective in, but it was ill-suited for, say, jungles. So the Persuader was usually used in cities, and there were also better droids for most roles, other than purely terrifying people. The Persuader was not very mobile. Again, it's one tank tread. Without those little outriggers, I'm not even sure how it would change directions. Real-life tanks have two sets of treads and a variety of mechanisms allowing them to steer. However, even going in a straight line, the Persuader wasn't very fast. It could reach at max 50 kilometers per hour. Where I live, that's the normal speed limit on like a suburban street. You'd be slightly speeding in a school zone. And these vehicles also weren't very smart. According again to the Star Wars fact file, unless the droid was receiving direct orders from a droid control ship, which was certainly possible, you can see those big antennas on its head, it was pretty easy to outmaneuver. And it's also got a strange set of weapons. The tank droid, despite its sort of surprising unwieldiness, was really used mostly to protect larger vehicles. I say mostly because it actually had weapon mounts on each side of the wheel, which could be used for a variety of weapons, but typically they were configured for that let's scare the crap out of civilians role, which played into the Clone Wars, so they'd be given laser cannons, missiles, thermal grenade launchers, and torpedoes. So imagine you're in an urban environment, this thing is just running through streets, hitting people, crushing buildings, weapon emplacements, whatever, while also firing off a variety of munitions. Also interesting, these small outriggers on the side also work as a Halo Scorpion style troop transport. Battle droids could sit directly on that and could deploy in hot zones. The only downside being, of course, they don't have a whole lot of protection. Going back to the personality here, the new essential guide to vehicles and vessels reiterates that these were great in urban environments, they could even topple buildings, and says, and I quote, tank droids were among the most feared by civilians because of their power and relentless nature. While homing droids might ignore unarmed civilians and hail fire droids carried limited payloads, tank droids crushed everything in their path and fired their weapons with wild abandon. Adding on that near the end of the Clone Wars, they also got voice modulators, which alongside their visual sensors, obviously their eyes, gave them a very terrifying, 
almost demonic look. I called it a slog, but I mean, looking down the barrel of one, definitely not very fun. The single track is definitely the tank droid's defining feature. For me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, there's the difficulty with turning, and that really limits how the tank droid can be used. I said practically the CIS often employed it to protect larger vehicles, but I mean, this thing is not going to be able to respond to enemies at your flank very well, unless it does have some droids with blasters. You'd imagine the central wheel would also be somewhat of a weak spot. It does seem to be pretty well armored, but that's definitely where I would be shooting at if I had an explosive and one of the things headed my way. So I definitely see its application in urban warfare. You know, narrow streets, this thing is heavily armored, taking up pretty much the entire street. Doesn't need to turn around really. What I would add though, probably some movable turrets, maybe one big one at the top. As a note, I was doing a bit of research and I did find this old image of a tank droid before episode three came out and it included what it called a gunnery door inside the tank where the wheel is. Don't really know how that would fit. Kind of makes sense. That also called the two eyes, the visual sensors, headlights, which whatever. It was for a toy. So the lore, you know, it switches up a bit sometimes. That however also does mention that the outrigger treads themselves can also be fit with specific defensive emplacements, which I really like. I imagine a, say, heavy blaster with a small energy shield. That could be great. But that's all I've got in today's video. Let me know. Do you like the Persuader? Do you think it's a goofy design? Is it too snail or slug-like? I look forward to reading all of your comments down below. Till next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.